How good are you with change? If you had a choice, would you say, I love change, let's go do it? Or would you be like, mm, I don't like change very much? Here's the thing, change, of course, also brings new stuff, which can be challenging, it can be fun, it can be an improvement, and it gives the brain something to do. And the brain needs that, something new to do. So in order to keep our brain healthy and really functioning, it's important that we have challenges every now and then. But change can, of course, be more than just challenges. So the question I asked is, change, does that resemble chaos or does it resemble challenge? That's basically the question. I wrote down a few examples as in how I believe that change can be present, how it can influence you. And to start with one, uh, it's, it's about unexpected change. So I'm going to say, to start really easily here. Today I went to the grocery store and last week, well, actually this week, I found out that they are closing an hour earlier. I can tell you, I was not too thrilled when I found out because I was standing for a closed door and it was right when I had a break during training. So I was so happy that we stopped half an hour earlier so I could walk over there and then nothing closed. And I was like, huh. And then I saw that they had changed the time, you know, they'd written over the, the old times. And I was like, oh, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> and well, today I knew, so when I went there, I was like, is this permanent? Was this a one-time deal? So it's probably permanent. And my next question was, so what does this mean for the other shops from the same brand, from the same store? And they said, well, we don't know. We know that certain shops are still open till late. And well, actually the time that I'm used to, which is 10 o'clock at night, by the way. And well, others, I already knew that they would close at nine. I didn't know any better. Now, ad adjusting, adapting to the new timeline, as in making sure that I get my stuff an hour earlier, which for me always is a challenge. Everything earlier is a challenge on my on my end. <laughs> Normally, I I rushed through the store and I I needed some stuff and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So my mind is somewhat chaotic. That's why I need to prepare when I do these kind of things. So I have somewhat of a clue what I'm going to talk about. And uh, that meant that I wanted to do some Pokemon stops. And I wanted to do the groceries. Well, the Pokemon stops have a certain time limit because, well, a Pokestop can have a Pokemon you can catch for, say, uh, 40 minutes, sometimes half an hour, sometimes an hour, depends on the gym, depends on the day, depends on what's going on. And then, well, and then I had, of course, a timeline of the store. And I was a little bit juggling between one and the other. Now, Friday for me is always a little bit of a weird day. Um, first of all, I'm going live on here. Preferably, I do it a little bit earlier than I did, but it depends on what's going on during the day. So normally I go to the physical therapist, then I go see a local client in a different city. And afterwards I go play drums. And 
by the time maybe some other stuff too, then I'll come here. And we're talking about a lot of hours which have passed since then. Well, today I couldn't get out of bed, I'll honestly say. So no physical therapist. Why? Because I had had two days of training and those were intense days. Now, good news was I didn't have to go see my client either. I said, okay, if we meet, I want to meet somewhere else. Um, during, due to circumstances, I cannot park where I normally park. So I said, let's meet somewhere else. And then she said, well, I'm still at a different location. So can we, can we shift it to tomorrow? Which I was like, yeah, sure. So that left me with a lot of time, if not, that I did, did have another training, <laughs> which was, well, officially it was an hour and a half and not so officially, it was almost two hours. So, okay, had to training. Then I went grocery shopping. Of course, wanted to do a few games. And the thing is, if I go to the Pokemon stops myself, to the gyms, then I don't have to pay anything. It's when I do it remotely that we have to pay. So I was like, let's not pay, let's just go there. And it was on the way to the grocery store anyway. Now, when I was in the grocery store, I was like, okay, I know where to find everything. All I need to do is open my app because weekly all the offers change. And I sort of knew what they had, but since I hadn't been there every day, it was still kind of new. And I opened it and then boom, everything was different. And I was like, where is the bonus box? I just need to see what's on sale. What did I pick out? Where is it? And at, at the moment that I come in and I have a certain routine so I need to have a basket which I can pull through the store. So we're not talking about a shopping cart. We're talking about a basket on wheels. Well, those things are flimsy as, I don't know, <laughs> it's, you know, wheels break off, handles break off. And it's always the question if they are actually there or if I have to go to the cash register to actually get myself one because, well, they they are supposed to be stacked at the beginning of the store. But yeah, they do end up at the end of the store. So for normal people, nothing to worry about. For me, I need to pull that basket. So when it's not there and I have to walk more, I'm like, I don't want to walk more. Still the result of one day I'm in pain, the other day I'm not. So I'm no fan of unexpected extra walking change, right? <laughs> so, okay, so I went in the opposite direction through to the store, through the store because of the basket. So that was the first thing that already was a little bit off. Then the bonus box didn't show and well, of course, I had to hurry. So I was like, okay. And the, the, the good thing is I pretty much know where everything is. So I have a certain route that I walked through the store. So most stores are somewhat similar. So I, I, I'm basically like, okay, what do I need? to have what's still in the fridge, what's not there, what's on sale, you know, all those kind of things. What do I want? Maybe I'm, you know, I want something special. And today it was about frozen fruit for my smoothies. I was fresh out of frozen fruit. So that was a priority for me. Anyway, I noticed that the moment that I rushed in and those baskets weren't there, that was already chaos on my end. And then when the app didn't show the way I expected it to show, that was chaos number two. <laughs> so it added to the chaos on my end. 
And of course, if I had had some more time, it would be less chaotic. But for me, it's it's a big deal with the the baskets. And so I asked them about it. I said, what, what's up with the baskets? And she said, well, we keep re replacing them. So we had a new order or we got a new batch like three weeks ago. And well, they're all gone, ruined, don't work anymore. And I was like, okay, I'm getting it. So since I'm sort of, it, it sounds a little bit, how can you be structured and at the same time be, be chaotic? Well, it's possible. Just look at me. I can be very structured. So I like to know where things are. And uh, there is there is a word for the kind of chaos. They call it systemized chaos. So it's kind of funny. But anyway, um, of course, it all ended well. I was on my bike and then I was like, oh, what am I going to do for food? And that was weird because the certain takeout restaurants, if you want to call them restaurants, were still open because they still closed at 10, whereas the shop had closed at 9. And I was like, okay, well, I want it somewhat healthy. I'm not going to say that it was totally healthy what I got, but I got it and it was kind of nice. Uh, the girl recognized who I was and so we got to talk about kind of some things. And well, I, I can say I was very relaxed by the time that I arrived at my house to go play drums. First, of course, feed the cat, brush the cat, <laughs> all these medication. And well, you, I never know what to expect because um, she's old. And well, apparently she was in pain today when I did certain things. So at first she was ha totally happy. And then at some point I could tell that she wasn't that happy anymore. Okay, enough of the day-to-day -day things. But change has to do with those day-to-day -day things. Let's face it you know the moment that i got the takeout i was standing there and i realized that the moment that i i ordered that i was like but how does that work if i want to pay with cash money because you know there's this poll and then you have to order and then you use your your uh, debit card credit card whatever it is that you pay with and then i was like hmm, okay interesting and those things are changing. So I used to be one of those people who love to talk to people uh, behind the cash register. But I noticed that when I go to the self cash register, I can take my time. I don't think that the people behind me like it, but I can sort of sort out everything exactly the way I want it. Now, interruption is when they have to do a checkup. So every now and then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to pack everything because I can count on the fact <laughs> that they are going to check everything. And then they have to pick like 10 or 13 random things. And then, of course, everything that was neatly packed is no longer neatly packed. Now, is that much of a disaster? No, it's not. It's um, a little annoying, but you know, it's part of the game. It's, I know it and I've accepted that. So I'm, I'm good to go when it comes to those things. But then let's go for the more intrusive changes. So when I talked about confrontational changes, for me, basically not having the baskets and especially the app being changed was confrontational. It was, you know, all of a sudden unexpected. But what about if we are talking about things which are way more intrusive? So like last week, for instance, I got new neighbors and the new neighbors, they have this music system and since my 
neighbors two doors down have decided to play music loud at night. Apparently they talk to everyone <laughs> on the back side of the buildings. So they got, um, they, they turned it really loud and I was like, and that requires adjusting on my end. I'm very sensitive to sounds and when I know what to expect, I, I'm pretty good to go. But today, when I was getting back on my bike, because over here it's, it's normally quiet, I don't interrupt anyone being here late at night, and the internet is quite good. So if I were to do it in my attic at my house, then the internet would constantly going in, out, in, out. So that, that's not working. And apart from that, um, even though I'm one floor up, I do keep people awake when I'm going up, down, up, down to the kitchen, other stuff, you know, whatever it is. So people are trying to sleep <laughs> and I'm trying to work. So it's easier to do it here. But the moment, of course, that there's this loud doom, 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 doom uh, going on, that's not going to work. I mean, apart from copyright claims, because it might be audible on this video, it's also that I cannot focus anymore. And I had to deal with that. And I was like, okay, so one moment I noticed that I was really on edge. So I talked to them and it was okay. And then so there are three of them, and the youngest one apparently didn't really communicate with the other ones. <laughs> so youngest one, next, music, loud. And I was like, hmm. And I've been thinking about a lot of things. I actually talked about it on the video. And I was like, how can I avoid this? How can I get around this? How can I just go away so I'm not confronted with it at all? So, you know, the first thing on my mind is, can I move? Uh, can I go to a hotel, sit there in the lobby, do my own thing where it's quiet? Those kind of things. But of course, there's only so much one can do. And the other question is, how much do we actually want to do? So, and then we get to adaptability so how adaptable am i and how adaptable are they so if they don't want to change then i need to adapt fortunately for me they do they said they are going to isolate the whole thing well that's what they said on the first day at least <laughs> and uh, the good news is that today they are actually done with the loud music now that i decided to start but here is the thing, if I want to start earlier, then, ah, there we have the lady. You have a StreamYard link, ma'am. It's going to be Friday Night Live with Lady Lexi and Chiki Yo. I was waiting for her, but I was like, I'm keeping my mouth shut until I'm sure that she's there. So, um getting back to um to the time that i start so there are people who would like me to start earlier well you've heard my schedule on fridays so for me it's kind of hard to start earlier with everything that i'm doing because it's pretty packed schedule from the moment that i go to the physical therapist then to the other city playing drums uh, maybe do other stuff too and then prepare and, and go here. So if I go here relatively early, say prior to midnight, then chances are that it's still going doom, 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 doom. That's not going to work. It's not going to work for me and it's not going to work for you if you can hear it. And if you can't hear it, you can still see me like, <laughs> so that's not going to work. So I, I noticed that I'm already starting to delay certain things because I expect them to make certain noise. So when I was 
on my bike back here. Still with groceries, of course, they had been in, uh, in the fridge and everything, but yeah, I need my groceries here too. <laughs> so I, um, I, I, I realized that I was thinking about what can I expect when I arrive here? And quite honestly, I was so happy to no longer be really disturbed by the neighbors two doors down. Apparently something had changed and well, it, it wasn't that loud anymore. So, you know, it was back to quiet, what I considered the norm until of course, a week ago, the new neighbors came in. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I can worry about this. And what's that going to bring me? Well, a lot of negative energy. So I don't want that. So what can we do? And it was so in my mind, I I sort of go, well, call it a, a virtual reality in my mind. And where I talk to people and you know, we talk about what's going on and you know, sort of to when you have a discussion, it's easier when you brainstorm to calm down, even though it's with a fictional person. And that's why I hope that uh, Chiki Jo no longer is just on YouTube, but that she actually comes in on StreamYard because she has a link both on WhatsApp and on uh, Instagram, in case she hasn't checked yet. <laughs> so um, even if she doesn't want to show up, but just comments and I can see her so she's backstage that would be nice okay so um getting back to those things so I was talking to the fictional person and I realized yeah that's that's a waste of time if I'm going to worry about it so I'll honestly say that I opened up the door well actually I arrived there okay no weird sounds, open up the door. Oh, no weird sounds. Okay, that's good. Walked up the stairs, could hear a little something and then it sort of was gone. So I was like, okay, we're good to go. Um, next question of course was, was Chiki Joe awake? <laughs> was she ready? Well, she wasn't ready yet and she probably was uh, asleep, which has to do with the late time. And she is very busy. Uh, life too. Oh, she's not getting it to work. Well, that seems to happen more often. <laughs> we still don't know why it is, but um, no, don't watch it. I want you to comment. And otherwise, just watch it, you know, live on, on YouTube. But it's nice if you're there. <laughs> so, well, so, um, the, the things that went on in my mind while I was on the bike went from, I need to talk to them about it. I need to explain to them how it works in my mind with chaos, the pressure cooker and everything. And like I said, I was like, oh, she's going to try and reload again. And I was like, well, maybe it's not even necessary. And if it comes down to it, we'll see. Having recorded a video about it earlier, where I actually said, I am starting to understand, you know, I understand overwhelm. I understand an overload of sensory input. And I understand that people want to flip the switch, not for a, a long period of time, but just to reset. And on that video, I said, but now I also understand why people want to jump. <laughs> so, and quite honest, I've, I've had multiple clients who were getting there. Like if nothing changes, then, and there's no way out, then I'm done. Well, one of my clients actually did, just like one of my colleagues did. And you probably know people too who have done it. And the question of course is how prepared are you for it? because do they announce it or don't they announce it? Well, uh, the, the clients who allowed me to help them, I've been able to help them multiple ones and they're still around. I'm very happy about that one. Uh, 
I'll honestly say that kind of change that takes its toll in you. So confrontational. Confrontational can be, you know, sort of like I just described, can be really horrible, can not be that horrible, depending on, on who you are and what you can handle, what you not can handle. But what if you are confronted with changes in the system because government has the government has different ideas? I've been there that I suddenly had to learn extra stuff because they said, well, you're a therapist, but it's not entirely proven, but you can continue on, but you have to go back to school and learn this, that, and the other. Okay, so I went back to school, learned this, that, and the other. And we knew already back then that it was like a temporary thing. And well, at some point it stopped. And a lot of my fellow therapists at that point in time said, we're going to quit. We're going to stop with our practice. We're done. And I wanted to go on. But, you know, at some point when health insurance companies don't pay for our sessions anymore, because that's what's, what's at stake, then people, you know, people want to have your services, but if they don't have to pay for it themselves at first, then chances are they will stop with your services, even though they really like it. Well, I could switch some things around, which is what I did. And then I started doing more things online and I did some other stuff locally which was more intense so i'm guiding certain people several hours a week each personally i do like that because i really get to know them i know what's going on and i know what i need to watch out for so when we talk about change and chaos for these people every change is almost chaos and they have to deal with a lot of overwhelm sensory input and they need structure. So I, I pretty much know what they're going through. And with the changing times, which we are going to talk about too, a lot of change is unavoidable. But the question of course is, even though it's unavoidable, does it work for the young ones out there? Now, I first want to go back to work. So what if there's new management? So from one moment to the other, it's like, hey, I'm your new manager and this is new, your new team leader. And well, we expect you to do this, that and the other differently. Ew. I don't know about you, but especially when certain agreements are no longer respect that because they didn't know about it well that's going to be you know adjusting and of course then we have the, the reorganizations so people can be confronted with change they didn't want and a lot of people get very nervous because they worry about what the future will bring and I often tell them, like, hey, oh, it's still not working. Oh, I'm patiently, I'm still here. So, <laughs> you know, go do, do your thing. I, uh, I always have Chief Rockstar, that's uh, the bear behind me, <laughs> if needed, for support. And what I've, I've seen is, especially when people are going from one reorganization into the other one, into the next one, how that influences them. And I'll honestly say it's not for the better. And one of the colleagues that I've lost was exactly the result of that part because, you know, a lot of people, they don't see how good they are. This was one of those colleagues that are really valued, but because they moved them around, because they didn't know where exactly to fit him. And at some point he 
got ill. So he was going to a new place. And then because he got ill, they filled his spot with someone else. And then he had to go to yet another place and he couldn't handle all those changes. So I believe, and then we come to changes for in, and the difference in generations that for the younger ones out there, who are used to change nonstop, things are easier. That doesn't apply for those who I guide, because those are the ones who are on the spectrum and they need structure, they need predictability, and they sometimes need some extra guidance, some extra explanation how things are have what what is expected from them so they might think they mean one thing and actually something else is meant i used to experience that too at the academy of art so i know what they're talking about the big difference is i can assist them going to college university whatever it is to guide them like, hey, this is what someone needs. The same applies to people who are working and things don't really work out very well. I can accompany them uh, to their boss or manager and talk to them about what it is they need and why things don't work out and what the solution could be. Personally, I wish I would have had someone like me back then. And being able to support someone through those times or several people is actually very gratifying. I cannot say anything else. And especially because I've seen the impact it can have on people. And like I said, when people are really stressed out, they stop believing in themselves, they stop believing in the future, and then everything goes haywire. That's the one thing we don't want. So, Ah, well, Joe says, I wish I had someone like you years ago. Well, that makes the two of us. <laughs> so then there are, of course, the changes. Well, the generational changes. And, well, you know, the IT, computers, everything. My mom, when she died, she was in her 80s, close to 90. She never worked with computers. She would look at my iPads and <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember it anymore how she described it, but it, it was kind of funny. And, you know, she could see that some things would go really quickly, like when I had to see what, uh, how much was on the meter then those numbers, you know, I could just put them in there on the app, on the iPad, and then <laughs> and gone it was. And it was like, thank you. And we didn't have to write it down on the card first and then go to the mailbox, the snail mail, then hope it would get there, then get a letter back. <laughs> now it was instantly in the email. It was there. But for her, getting used to it, that wasn't easy and she felt left out. Now, if we go to the young ones, I don't know if you've seen the young ones, and Joe probably uh, will recognize this. They can stand in front of the TV and be swiping, and then, of course, nothing happens. <laughs> but they are so used to an iPad or a tablet where they swipe or the phone, <laughs> they're like, well, why is nothing happening on the television? Um, so what's, what's Joe saying? She said, my dad, too, he still has a basic phone, no high-tech one. He wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. And then there are the people who, well, when we talk about dealing with overwhelm, who don't want a smartphone at all. So they use the old-fashioned Nokia, you know? Just simply dial your number. Well, you don't dial it, you tap it. Um, but that's about it. You know, you have your address book. You may be able to send a text message, but no WhatsApp, no apps, nothing. 
And quite honestly, the thing that got me to use a mobile phone was the cameras on there. I loved taking pictures. I still do. And whenever they would have a better camera, that's how they got me. That's how they got me to move forward and do new stuff. But I'm very brand oriented because if certain things, menus all of a sudden change, it's like, <coughs> and that's the chaos I was talking about. So Joe says, same as cash card, old people struggle too. That's why so many get scammed. Yeah. So my dad said, we don't use cash cards. <laughs> it was a no go. My mom, she wanted to be very careful, but you know, old age, she couldn't hear very well. So at some point she would just give the card to one of us or to my cousins or whoever, shout the pin code. <laughs> and I was like, mom, you can't do that. No, you cannot write it down. That's how people get scammed. That's how people get robbed. Please don't. But yes, so if you see the, the older ones out there who still have trouble adjusting. And then of course there are those who actually have been working with computers. Yeah, exactly. Who have been working with computers. So they grew up around computers. And I have to say, when I see people in the nineties and they sit behind a computer, I'm always like, okay, you know your email, you know your other stuff, you know your way around. And that makes all the difference. So when I started working, I've both seen that we actually use pen and paper, especially on mortgage contracts. And I, prior to it, well, no, was that? No, that was first. And then the next year when I went to the Academy of Arts, we had those little Apple computers. That, oh, they, they were tiny little ones. But working with those and books, that is still helping me till this day with all the editing programs. So that's good. And then when I started working after Academy of Arts, I started working in IT. So we had the computers and I always said, I'm not going to work in IT. And what happened? I started working in IT. And there she says, oh my God, I remember my first computer. And <laughs> oh yeah, I had to dial to get on the net, not like nowadays. And it was so funny because you could literally hear the bouncing of the, the, the tone. Ding, 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 and then, ding, 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 and then. So there's this song from 58 Candy. And if you have the CD, then actually the CD starts with that sound. And well, and then it was fingers crossed because what would the speed be like? Now, and there is something mag magical, at least for me, when it comes to IT, because I've seen those big machines, you know, big, 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 as in room-wide big, water-cooled for three gigabytes. And now we have a thumbnail for three gigabytes or more. 16, 32, 64 gigabytes, 128. It's so funny if you think about it. So I do believe that IT has made a lot of things easier, but the downside of course is there is less communication, there is less personal interaction. And oh, I'm not all too fond when it comes to dealing with bots, when it comes to customer service, the bots hardly ever want to explain to me what I need because, well, the things that I can sort out myself, I've already sorted that out by that time. And the other things, then I still have to wait until customer service is in. So what's Joe saying? Um, nobody could ring if you were online. Oh yeah, that was true. You know, that's, I'm so used to nowadays that we're able to call and actually go online at the same time. And it's so weird that every now and then when I'm abroad, then all of a sudden I cannot go online anymore when I'm on the phone with someone and I'm like, so I'm, I'm glad that, you know, things are unlimited 
uh, of course, there are also people who have data bundles which are limited, just like uh, phone time minutes, which are limited. I prefer when it's all, you know, I can do it how much, wherever, whenever I want. I'm a bit of a luxury person when it comes to those things. Now, getting back to um, change. So this change, what we're talking about, is something that gradually happens. And like I said, depending on what generation you are, things are normal because they didn't know. I mean, there are a lot of people who were born after 2000 a phone a dial, dial a phone number what 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 dial you just do this no no you had to dial what why this no this <laughs> you know it's it's the the difference in perception and like i said i i do like the nostalgic part of actually having experienced it and knowing what the improvement is. So Joe says, as Luchi says, remember when we used to talk? Yeah. And I think that's, that's a very good one. So when we talk about the social aspect, and I'm going to write this down because I didn't plan to talk about the social aspect, but I do want to get back to it. Do you know when there were board games, actual board games with actual cards? Chick Joe knows because we played cards not too long ago. We don't see one another very often because we live in different countries. Um, but the moment that we do hang out, uh, we like to either play cards or do some board games. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And I, she actually explains to me the customs of her country. So she's from the UK. And I spent Christmas with her, not um, last year, but the year before. And she showed me a lot of stuff. And that, that was so amazing. I'm, I'm happy that she did. But you know, board games, cards, physical things you can touch. I like it. But of course, who doesn't remember that there's the, um, um, we called it Passion Solitaire, that's it. As far as I can tell, pretty, well, not the first computer. The first computer had um, tet Tetra, uh, if I say correct. So you had all those little blocks and they would turn you could with the cursors you couldn't turn them left right up down <laughs> and then you had to move them pretty quickly because they would fall down and there was a certain opening <laughs> that's what started at first with but pretty sure soon i think with the the first uh windows computers they had solitaire and a lot of people started solitaire that playing that that one was and, you know when you were like well, you needed a break or something, or you had nothing to do, then what would you do? And especially when waiting online, remember what we talked about, when waiting for the internet to start up, click, 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 you would do solitaire. So that's what we would do. And yes, playing cards with Chris, Christmas was great. She, that, that's so true. Of course, we now also know that it does a lot with our eyes, so it's actually not that good. But what I've learned, pretty early on is when i want to know something about the phone ask someone in their teens whether it's 10 years old or older but they know it probably better and quicker than we do so that's something to take away anyway um so when we talk about it technology we talk about improvement with time so it's not confrontational well it can be confrontational when you're older because at some point you cannot avoid it and well people are impatient so it has to be done now whereas certain people will never be ready for it especially when you get older the adaptability um, goes down and actually the whole well, adapting to new stuff 
or adapting to normal life already can be hard. So let alone new stuff. New stuff is probably something, you know, that's, if you're lucky, you can handle it. You can create new neural pathways in your brain. But if you're not so lucky, then everything suddenly starts to slowly break down and you go back to the beginning. And when you go back to the beginning and you are my age, that was prior to computers. So there you go. Um, so thinking about it, change can also be about choices. So if I think about this week, this week has been pretty chaotic, not just because the supermarket changed times, not just because all of a sudden there was noise, but simply because I had my three day challenge, which was Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So I, every last weekend of the month, I do a challenge. I start with Friday night live, then I also look back on the week and then Saturday and Sunday are day two and day three. I love doing the challenge. I did it from a little bit of a different um, perception, which was good. It's nice to actually try something else. Here we go again, change. And this is change that I embrace and also you know, whereas I was like artificial intelligence, really, I don't want that. I'm actually starting to appreciate artificial intelligence, even though I just said something about that, Bob, remember, with customer service. But choice, choice could be you're going to relocate, you are going to work in a different place, you are going to a different country, you are going there on holiday, you are going to move there, you are going to go the first time on a plane. <laughs> and this is why I wanted Cheeky Joe to be here in the life with me. But well, um, technology is uh, only so good as, you know, as it gets. And this time it's not working. So, uh, but she knows what I'm talking about. Oh. Oh, I, I miss it. I miss it that she's not there. But, you know, we are live, so that's the way it works. But, you know, even though you choose it, it can still be a bit scary. So one of the things is I never am going to drive in the UK. You know, I still have problems just walking, crossing the street because everything is so different. And, you know, there are, I've been across the border here you know it's especially now that the borders are open you know back in the days i i didn't drive cars i've never experienced it but back in the days you would have to have a passport and show it at the border of a country and well by the time that i crossed the border on my own uh, i still need to have my passport officially but I never had to show it, unless, of course, I go by plane. That's a whole different story. And yes, says Chiki Joe, I know that experience. First time on the plane, eight hours, oh my God. And then she is in luck. So coming from the Netherlands, I either have to change in the UK. And then most likely, depending on where I'm going, I will have to change again somewhere in the US. But if I go straight to the US, I always have to get a different flight as well. So it, it's never just one flight. That's luxury, luxurious, actually, if you think about it. So anyway, um, so going on plane, of course, is relatively new. But if you sort of know what to expect, it's not like you have to drive yourself or any of that stuff. So you have to rely on other people, which of course isn't easy to, um, well, it depends. I had to learn to speak up all the time. 
because of medications that I need, but also because I couldn't walk. I couldn't carry my suitcase inside when I was using crutches. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons where I learned to, to speak up. And nowadays I know a lot more than most people who are actually working at the airport. And it's, it's so funny. And, uh, oh, she says, I feel sorry for you what you have to go through when going through borders. What Cheeky Joe doesn't realize is actually kind of fun. First of all, I get medical assistance. So the, the, the question, of course, is when does it start and how grumpy are they? But usually they're very sweet people. And well, I want to say, especially in the US, they're, they're more service oriented. So I'll always make sure that I've got some bills or some other stuff with me. And well, people, I always ask like, hey, what's going on? You know, all those things. And then of course, I'm one of those types, especially on those long flights, say they are like in total 14 hours. I actually had one flight that was in total almost 24 hours. So I had to change like two times. And so I want Starbucks, <laughs> you know, because a lot of stuff on board I can not eat and I can drink. So I need to have my own food supply with me because there's only so much they can accommodate. And I know this by now. So it's, I, I don't stress out about it. I know what I want and I tell them. <laughs> so, and, you know, I, I do remember the first time I went to Barcelona airport. So what I've come to learn is that in Europe, most people don't speak English. Well, let me repeat that again. They don't speak English. German people speak German, not English. French people speak French, not English. The Belgian people who are on the Dutch side speak Dutch and French, not English. Well, nowadays they speak English too. In Spain, no English. Italy, no English, as far as I can tell. The Dutch are actually the exception on the rule. And then even depending on which generation we're talking about. So my mom could speak English. My dad could speak English. Then there was a generation between my mom and my dad that couldn't speak English. And of course, the young generation can speak English. So it's, it's a little bit weird that depending on which country you go, you actually need to change uh, language. So when I go across the border, when my friends from the US come over, they are musicians and well, they want to talk in English, then most of the time, like I said, no English. So I had to learn French and German in school. I'm not going to say it's fantastic. I'm pretty sure that Chica Joe talks way better French than I do. But, you know, I can manage. And nowadays I'm learning Spanish too. So the first time I went to the airport in Barcelona in Spain, I was like, I know some words, but what was it again? So when I discovered Duolingo, I was so happy because then I finally got to recognize certain words, learn, and if I go to Spain now, I would be able to manage. I mean, it's not perfect, but I, it's it's doable, you know? I can talk with hands and feet and words and I can describe it. And thank you, Joe says your English is amazing. Well, I guess that growing up with a music from Kiss, trying to understand what they were saying before I went to high school, so we didn't have any English prior to it. That already made a lot of difference. And by that time, we had the first movies and we didn't. So in, in Germany and in Spain and France, and that's why they have a disadvantage compared to us. They actually re-record all the voices in their native language which sounds really weird. Just imagine Bruce Willis, you know, in a totally different accent. <laughs> Just mentioning someone, John Travolta, whoever. Um, well, 
uh, Hank Foyt, Chicago PD, Jason Begay. <laughs> that would be funny. I'm, I'm telling this because Joe and I, we are huge fans of Chicago PD. That's one of the reasons we went to Chicago together. Um, so I never really got used to it. But, you know, those things are, when, when I was in, uh, in, in Spain, yeah, there was the airport. I didn't expect that only a few people could speak, speak English, even though I knew it was true. Yeah, and she says she hates it when they do it. So they call it, um, they, what do they call it? It is synchronization, but it, there's different words before it. Um, so I don't know how to translate it precisely in this case. But like I said, they substitute the voices, so it's it's the, the, they use voiceovers. Let's put it that way. And yeah, different actors, different tone, different everything. But going to uh, Barcelona, and so yeah, I I had some issues there because I got stuck at the airport when I got back. And actually, I still believe that. It sounds very dramatic and it was very dramatic because someone had broken into my car and then I had to go to the police station and then the shuttle uh, bus decided to return back to the shuttle um, center because they needed to pick someone up to, while I was already late. So they tried to get me on the plane, tried to get my suitcase on the plane, threw everything out that was over half a liter or... Um, uh, 100 centiliter and then still stuck and then the guy said do you mind if I go home and there I was in the wheelchair still with the suitcase <laughs> well I managed I had a great time afterwards so the, the most exciting thing actually was not what was going to happen when I missed a flight it was getting in the car and driving there for some reason, I've made a huge thing in my mind that driving across the border is... I'm not sure why, because the Netherlands is pretty chaotic as it is, and I live in a big city, so it's chaotic. And when I started driving in France, I remember, you know, seeing it from a distance the first time around in Paris, I was looking at it like five lanes and they go around this big square. I don't know if that's the one with Arc de Triomphe. Could be totally mistaken. And we were looking at it. We were in this, this tour bus, in this coach. And it was like, oh, every one out of two cars actually has a dent in it. Now, do you know how I ended up driving in France? And you're not going to leave this. I didn't plan on driving in Paris. <laughs> Let's be specific about that. I mean, I had driven in Paris before uh, or in France, but not in Paris. But I was supposed to meet up with my friends. I had the big bass drum covers in my car. And then it turned out that when I was going to meet them in Belgium, I was a day late. So it has to do with the time differences and everything. So um, I got there and they were in Germany and they were like, well, you can come to Germany, but the next day they would be in France and the way two friends is through Belgium. And in this case, they performed in Paris. So all of a sudden I was driving there in Paris and to my surprise, it was nothing other than rush hour in the morning in the Netherlands. So I was like, oh, that's it. So change in that case it can be a choice to go do certain things and it can be scary at first but we can also take in consideration what do we need to know so one of the things is well until barcelona that was um, people are actually responsible for me when they give me medical assistance and not so much in the netherlands then you have those people who say, no, we are there to walk beside you. We're not going to help you out. Well, I can tell you the moment that I hear those things, the next time I'm there, 
<laughs> I'm going to the desk and then I'm going to talk with the people who have been working there for a longer period of time. And like, you know what happened to me last time, this, that, and the other. I don't think that's correct, is it? No, it's not. Okay, so I, you know, I want to know about it. So, and people are always, why do you ask that? It's already done. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not the only one. And, you know, I don't want to have that happen to me again. So, so going back to all the things that I discussed, we're talking about conformational changes, which can be the, so the basically the unexpected changes, things that you don't count on. So for Chica Jo, she wanted to be here with me. I know she wanted to be here with me because we talked about it earlier. And then she didn't get it to start up. It happens. Um, so there's confrontational, which is, well, let's just say it, it sucks. And then there's confrontational and that's stress level maxed out, especially for people who are dealing with overwhelm and also for people who have had traumatic experience. So every time they're confront confronted with something, it just builds up unless of course they learn how to deal with it. And like I said, I had to tell myself at some point, <laughs> she said, I tried five times. I'm not going to say what she says after that. Um, but um, <laughs> it's so hard to get back <laughs> into focus after <laughs> reading that. Um, but yes, um, I had to tell myself, okay, I'm not going to waste energy uh, on something, you know, considering all the worst case scenarios, let's just chill, enjoy the, the bike on the right, the ride on the bike. And, you know, so that's what I did. Then I talked about improvement and depending on which generation you are, like I said, and she actually hasn't answered that one. So your grandkids, and I'm not talking about the youngest one. <laughs> I'm talking about the five-year-old or the close to five-year-old. Um, does Did she actually at some point stand in front of the television and try to swipe? Because that's usually what young ones do out there. And, you know, every time I see those kids who are like, five or six years old or two or three years old even still when they're eight years old and i see them with the ipad i'm like oh my god what if they drop it because it's so immensely expensive i mean we had toys which were cheap and nowadays we give our ipads to the kids okay yeah you can use that one just so they are busy okay I don't have children. I just watch it and I'm like, hmm. So kids, they adapt easily. And the younger you are, you know, the more adaptable you, been, you, you are. That's the way it is. And of course, when you're older, um, it becomes harder and harder. That's the way it is. So older people, they uh, thrive on experience. And that's why they know things really quickly. Whereas the, 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 the very young generation, they, they constantly create all those new neural pathways. And that's why they get to pick up on things. That's why it's so important, actually, to keep doing brain games. That's why it's important to actually play a musical instrument because you have to use your left hand and your right hand. And in my case, playing drums, I also have to use both feet. Just think about that one. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that's good, but it's not always easy. But at least it's something that gradually changes. And yes, we can not be happy with it. But, well, you know, um, we try to manage as best as we can and help out others who cannot manage to work around it. And now... I talked about choice, the choice to actually go abroad, move, change houses, change environment. 
that's not easy, but that's change we can embrace. And it might take us time to adapt, to adjust, but we can do it. And, you know, a lot of Ukraine people have come here, and I'm especially talking about the younger ones. And, you know, we've had other people from other countries come live here, especially when the men came to work here. So the men would be able to speak the language at some point, but then their women would come too and their children and the women would never learn the language and the children would be raised in the original language, so not our language. And as a result, they are dealing with a delay going to school. And that's a huge problem nowadays. Now, the people who speak English, they are a little bit lazy because they don't have to speak Dutch. <laughs> that's what they always say. Yeah, we want to learn Dutch, but the Dutch people start to speak English. Now, that's different when uh, it comes to people from the Ukraine. They speak Russian and Ukraine. We don't speak Russian. We have no clue what they are saying. It's one of those languages we don't learn at school. So we don't know. And I'm surprised how quickly and flawless you can hear the accent. But in years, less than a year sometimes even, they, they start speaking fluently Dutch. And they say, well, it's not fluent. But, you know, no mistakes. And there are people who come from other Dutch countries overseas. And, well, we have certain words. So in, in French, you have le and la. And in Dutch, you have de and het. <laughs> and everything is de. It's as simple as that. And I'm always surprised, like, you've been raised Dutch. You've been raised this Dutch language. Why don't you know the difference? Now, I do know that Dutch is a difficult language, but still. And these people, the new ones, when they're really motivated, you'd be surprised what's possible. And I have to say, chapeau, take my head off for those people. They are in a very difficult situation and they adapt so quickly. So that's, you know, you can, of course, debate whether they had a choice or not, but they chose to move. And well, I mean, they're welcome here. So uh, we don't want people to be in a war zone. It's just not fair the way it is. So, of course, um, no, I'm not going to get there. Now, in addition to being confronted with change, um, improvements in time and having choices. We also talked about overwhelm when you are easily, um, well, when all your sensory input is huge. So for me, like when I hear these sounds, when it's like during daytime and it's normal, and normal for me is I, I'm used to it. I don't have a problem with it, but when it's all of a sudden, it's very invasive. And when I go somewhere in like in the pharmacy, for instance, and I smell all those odors and everything, I can handle it. Am I happy with it? No, not so much, especially not since COVID because during COVID, everything calmed down. Sensory input was close to zero. That was so cool. Okay, so, and we talked about the social aspect, of course, with the difference in, in generation and how we are able to adapt. So Joe says, I find Dutch very hard. Well, she never had to learn to speak it. She, so Joe speaks both uh, English and French because um, her mom, although she lived in the Dutch part of Belgium, she spoke French. So... Well, anyway, when it comes to change, I want you to think about what the things are that you can cope with and what you cannot cope with. But I also want you to think about something else because I've talked about the people who are in the spectrum 
the people here deal with sensory overload. I've talked about people who have to deal with changing organizations. And well, if you are on the other end, so you are that manager that comes in new, or you are that boss that has no clue how to communicate with your employees, but while well, you're a boss, you needed the team. So, you know, what's there to do? Think about those people. Also, you know, when you talk to the elderly and you see that they have problems adapting, get out your comfort zone and and give them some attention on the other hand also think about what is it that you are willing to do because when it comes to change what are we actually willing to do i mean when i talked about chaos this week because i had the challenge and then i had um brendan's training fund ultra so my challenge was on friday saturday and sunday and then normally on wednesday I have training and then a coaching call. Well, the training was from one of the people from Brandon Burchard. And at the same time, Brandon was teaching himself. So that already didn't work out. And then I had to tell my coach, who is the coach from Brandon too. Brandon is going on all night long. So he, for me, it went on until like four in the, in, in the in the night and then i would still go live talk about it because i was so high on my energy which is one of the reasons that i didn't go to the physical therapist today because yesterday was the second day now if that's not enough today there was another informational evening so i had day one ultra on the first on the second today the third there was still preparation and then starting on monday Yes, there we go. <laughs> we have four days in a row of training. So I had to go back to my coach again and said, I still don't want to do this because, you know, I've got CHPC recertification. So CHPC is a certified high performance coach. So that's a system of coaching that Brendan came up with. And that's one of the things that I do embrace when it comes to change. It's one of the things that I'm like, yeah, I get that. I understand that. And he comes with new insights, which I can use. I'm not going to say it's easy, but that's for a different broadcast, not today. But you know, all those things considered, and then of course the change in timeline with, with the grocery store and everything and the music in the background, that was a little bit much. But, you know, uh, I'm good to go again. I loved the training. I was very inspired. And he, he talked about certain things which got me so stoked and hyped. And it's like what Chiki Joe says. She says, you get so happy when you go live with that guy. So you're buzzing after. I love it. Well, he answered one of my questions again. So that was so good. And she also says that she had to learn Dutch when she was in school in Belgium. And she hated it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So um, so that part of change. Um, and then we do get back to technology and all that stuff. That, that's something that I want to leave for the next time. Because it still has to do with choices. It also has to do with, like I said, changing technology with a lot of changes because what used to work in the past due to research, uh, we now know is not working anymore or it's not true anymore. We know more about the brain. We know more about the body. And so there are a lot of things that keep developing and then we get and when we talk about change, that's part of it too. But that's for the next time around. For now, like I said, I want you to think about what's the one thing you are having trouble with adapting. So I actually wrote a few things down uh, when it came to change about how to look at change. And well, 
if you want the PDF which is related to it, if you want to know what I'm talking about, just check YouTube. There is Change, Chaos or Challenge. I talk about it and you know, if you want the PDF, then you already are registered for the challenge, which is going to be at the end of this month. And still the first week of the month. Well, this time I'm going to be prepared. That's one thing that I said that I am going to do. So I'll talk to you again soon. If you want to talk about this a little bit longer or you don't know how to deal with overwhelm in this time, then find me. It's uh, one of the things that I do talk a lot, uh, talk about a lot with people, especially when they are not heard, seen and understood. That's why I teach people to speak up and speak out, especially about those things which are normal for a lot of people. That is what we call the neurotypical people and are not so normal for a bunch of other people which are called the neurodivergent people. And well, possibly inclusion is something, a term that, that's more understandable for you. But I'm there, I have my weekly group coaching training. I get into things which require change and why people have trouble adapting. And I look at it from several aspects and I also do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching where we get into, okay, I have to change things but how, when, why, I don't want it, I can do it. And I'm pretty sure that you can. If you want to see more videos related to change, go there, click there, yes, right there.